Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica support videos. This is Ashik Salim from Informatica GCS and this video is a continuation of the series How to read IDOCs from SAP in Cloud Data Integration. In the part 1 series of this video, we saw how to create an IDOC reader connection, what are the prerequisites required for this connection, and also how to create an IDOC maplet which is needed for the mapping. And in this video, we'll see how to use that connection in the mapping, how to use that maplet, and what are the advanced source properties available in that map, maplet options. Moving on to the IDOC reader source. To read IDOCs from SAP application, we use an IDOC reader connection and we have to configure the IDOC source properties in the source transformation in a mapping. So in the connection, we have to select the name of the source connection which we have created and the source type and object will be auto-populated. The source type will be single and the source object will be an IDOC reader object. It will be auto-populated and it cannot be changed. But the properties which we have to configure for the IDOC reader connection comes on mainly under the advanced properties. So in the advanced property, these are the set of properties we have. The first one is the idle time, which indicates the number of seconds the secure agent waits for an IDOC to arrive before it's reading from SAP source. So if we put the idle time as 330, then after 30 seconds, uh, that is like 30 seconds without any IDOC sent from SAP, the uh, mapping uh, com marks as completed. By default, it is 300. And next is the packet count, which controls the number of packets the secure agent reads from the SAP before stopping. So if we set it as 10, then after reading 10 packets, the IDOC reader stops and the mapping will be completed. The next one is a reader flush latency. It determines in how many seconds the secure agent flushes the data from source. Then uh, the reader time, uh, time limit. It determines how many seconds the reader mapping will run. So if we set it as a 10 seconds, so after 10 seconds, the mapping will automatically mark as completed. And using this property, we can set an infinitely running uh, listener workflow. So if we set the reader time limit as zero and the packet count and the idle time as minus one, then it will run indefinitely. Next is the recovery cache folder, but this property is not applicable when you configure the SAP data source transformation. And the other two ones, the number of retries for connection residency and delay between the retry for the connection residency. These are the properties available for the connection residency. So since it is a real time connection and it will be running for a long time or maybe indefinitely, like there might be some connection breakage in the between. So the number of retries determine how many times it this uh, the mapping of the connection retries to set the connection again before it marks a, marks a failure. And the delay between the retries for connection resiliency determines the delay. Like the after the first retry, whether it should how many seconds it should wait for before doing another test connection and trying to establish the connection. The last one is the tracing level. So this Using this, we can set the tra tracing level as normal verbose initialization or verbose data to see more data or this will be helpful when we are troubleshooting any data loss or data leak. So these are the properties we can set at the IDOC re reader source. Then we'll move on to the demo. So in this demo, we'll be using the same connection and the same applet we have created in the part one of this video and using that we will be creating the mapping so i'm going to create a new mapping so the mapping session i will go for new mapping so i'm i'm giving a name for this mapping
in the source connection I'm going to select the connection which we had created earlier it is using a type R connection just going to expand it so the query options are not supported because filter and sort is not supported for this kind of connection and in the advanced property the idle time is by default set as 300 we can set it as minus one for running it indefinitely packet count minus one and all the other properties which we have discussed so i'm just going to keep it as such and um, then here from the source we will have three fields this is like the basic idoc structure which is having the basic idoc type extended idoc type idoc record and the document number so i'm going to just add the maplet here so in the maplet session i'm going to select the maplet which we had created in the part one series see the maplet uh, this is the same maplet which we had created in the part one of this video and this so this will be a real-time session so only thing we have to make sure is that all the segments which we need to be selected in the maplet need to be selected and also it should be a transaction type that is the transformation scope of the idoc maplet needs to be transaction so that the real-time data transfer can happen then i'm going to map the source to the maplet now in the field mapping if you see we have an idoc data field so to we have to map the idoc record from the source to the idoc data so this is just contains the basic idoc type like it will write if since we are uh, taking at mass, it will have the mat mass 05, whichever one needed, and the extended IDO type if there is any, and the document number of the IDOCs. So we have to map the IDOC record to the IDOC data. And in the out output fields, we can see the first set is the control control record. So it will have the table name, uh, client number, document number, from which system it is sending, which is a sending partner, all those details. And next one is one of this uh, parent segment we have selected, E2 Mara. And another child segment also we had selected. So, and the last one is the IDOC error interpreter. So, this one will write any IDOC error that is rejected by the maplet. So, rejected by the maplet, by this means, now for this particular message type, we have only selected two segments. So. What if another segment comes there, like it, it falls under the syntax error or any other IDOC that doesn't support this particular interpreter transformation we have selected. So all those goes into the IDOC error group and it will write in the error IDOC data. So we can map the error IDOC data to a flat file to see which were, what were the projected details and all those information. And if you see, these are the, all the outputs. So in the target, I'm going to have a relational data object. So the point of having a relational data object is that actually the flat file won't be helpful in case of the IDOC reader because it for the it is a, a since since our flat file connection does not support streaming, it need a target that honors commit so that like all the data can be written at the real time. So that's why that's why I'm going to create an uh, relational connection I already have I'm just uh, for this demo I'm just going for a created runtime so I'm just going for it giving up I'm mapping the target so there is no need of field mapping since it is creating at the real time. So I'm going to create one more target. So this will also be a relational target because we want to write another segment to it. So 
Let me select the connection. Here also I'm going to create the one runtime only to Mara. So mapping it. So as mentioned, we we can these control output and I don't know, error output this is optional like we can map it if we need if you map the control output you can get the document number document number of the mapping uh, from which system it was dated on all those uh, important uh, imbo information regarding the idocs and for this one you will get whichever idocs were rejected so i'm just for this demo i'm just mapping the two segments only i think we have mapped everything i'm just going to save the mapping So the mapping is saved now. I'm going to run the mapping now. Running the mapping. Just going to my jobs. So my process is starting. So meanwhile, uh, let me go to the SAP system and show you the logical system I have created the RFC and the logical system I've created so if you remember in the part one we have used LS Ashik as the RFC for this particular connection so I'm just going to do a connection test you can see the connection test is for failing now so the connection is not made this process is just starting only you can see it has started running so let's do the test connection again from SAP now. Yeah, the connection test is successful now. So uh, we can see it is connected to the SAP system. Now I'm going to send the IDOCs. So the message type is MATMAS and to the logical system, which we have created. So 11 master IDOCs have been sent. So these details I'm just going to check in W02. I'm going to give the time also so that it is it will be easy for you to see. So in the outbound IDOX, we can see there were 11 master IDOX sent and eight of them with two segments and three of them with four segments. So let's see the status in I see IDMC now. You can see uh, the real time it's running and still writing to the target there were 39 rows sent from sap 11 was right written to e2 mara and 3 to et e2 mkt so as we can see there are 39 rows and only 14 were written so we're thinking some data is missing right so that details we can see in the verbose log also if we enable it but from the sap we can explain the same there are 11 uh, documents in the total. In each of them, there are the parent segment. So if we open one of them, we can see there are data records, E1 uh, Mara 1 and E1 Mara M. So E1 Mara M we have already mapped and we have added it in the maplet. So 11 of this will be there that we can see in the, you can see also, see the 11 here. So there are 11 parent segment, 11 that is written. And then in the SAP system, this E1 Mara 1 we have not added in the maplet, so 11 of them have been rejected. And in these segments with four segments, we can see there is also E1 MKTM. This is the one we have mapped. So there are three of them with the with that particular segment, and we can see those three also return. So how is the 39 number came? So 11 parent segments and oh, we can just count the segment number so if we count this number it will come to 28 so the 39 that is the 11 control record so for each of the side of number there is a single control record also we have not mapped a control record also as you remember so the 28 segment that is each of them are coming as row and 11 control records coming that is the 39 so it's and whichever ones we have added in the maplet is getting read, other ones are getting rejected. 
and it is written, get, getting written to the target. So as we have set for five minutes, it's, it will run. And if we run set it as indefinitely, it will run indefinitely. So we, I'm just going to stop the mapping manually. So we'll have a clean stop. That completes the demo on how to read iDocs from SAP. We can see more de details on the steps we have performed now and the properties in the below documentation. And we would love to hear the feedback from you on this support video as well as on the other support videos. You can either write to us on support videos at informatica.com or contact us through our Twitter handle. And that is all on this video. Thank you everyone for watching.